is going on peoples? I am DJ Ab McCree and this is my beginner's course of how to make your first beat on the MPC-1. Now there are multiple versions of the MPC-1, just different colorways or whatnot, minus the MPC-1 Plus, where the only difference between that and the original MPCs is that it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This video will work with that particular MPC as well as the OG MPCs. And if you are looking for a more detailed video on that, I recommend that you support us at 16levels.com. I have a link in the description box because I have a master class there for every MPC, including the MPC-1. The link will be in the description box for that. And you can use the code HOLIDAY23 to get 50% off right now. Also, we're giving away an MPC-1. I have more details in the description box just in case you are inquiring about an MPC-1, but if you wanna take a chance to win one, all those details are in the description box as well as my other giveaways that I've done in the past. If you just purchased your MPC-1 or any of the other MPCs that exist, make sure that you go to akaipro.com and create an account and sign into your account after you created it. Then register your MPC over here in New Product using the serial number that is provided to you on the side of the box. After registration, go to your software downloads and make sure that you download the MPC 2.12 download software or whatever is available. And the most important thing, which is the MPC content manager. Don't worry, I already know someone will mess it up and that's okay, everybody makes mistakes. So I have two videos in the description box on how to update your firmware on your MPC. It's easier to do the process on the MPC One Plus because you have Wi-Fi on it and all you have to do is just log into your account from your MPC One. The first time you open up your MPC One, it is ideal to look at the back of the unit. But let's look at the back of the unit right here. We'll see how you turn your MPC on using this power button where you plug up the power to the MPC. So this is where you use the 12 volt adapter that is supplied by Akai. A USB in where you can plug up a MIDI device or even some hardware. A USB out where you can hook it up to a computer, a Kensington lock, a MIDI in, MIDI out. These are five pinned in. CV and gate where you can hook up modular gear, where you can adjust the recording volume at so that is correlated with the input left and right and these are quarter inch ins and this is quarter inch outs which are the main outs and this is how you get sound out of your mpc and this is the main volume i recommend that you adjust the main volume as you need so we'll take our quarter inch cables and plug up the mpc so you plug up the red into the r which is right and then you'll plug up the black into the L, which is left. And then let's plug up the power supply. You'll plug it up right here. On the front of the unit, you have a SD card slot that is located right here and where you can plug up a pair of headphones through a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It is important that you know that if you have an SD card that you should put it inside of the MPC-1 before you turn it on and never take it out while it's on. So let's power up the unit and you'll be greeted with a splash screen. After the splash screen, you'll be greeted with a template screen where you have all kinds of different templates for different styles of music from classic house all the way to trap soul. What we're gonna do is start up an empty project by hitting this empty project button. Now we're about to learn about the screen. This is the home screen or called the main screen. And you can also navigate through this touch screen by tapping on this side of the screen, the left side, and you will see a grid, which is a piano roll. You'll also see tracks, the sequencer, which is a step sequencer, and then the XY effects. So let's go back to the home screen and we need to learn about these different parts. So the first part we need to know about is the sequence part where you can adjust the BPM. Right now is at 100 BPM and four bars and you can see the start is at the one to the end is at the four and then you can also transpose. You also have different options over here using the pencil sign where you can see different things in front of the screen. The second part of the main screen is the track screen where you can control the different types of programs that you have. The different types of programs that you have is the drum program by default. You have a plugin program where you can use your plugins on your MPC. You have a key group program you have a clip program, you have a MIDI program, CV and gate. On this side of the screen right here, you see that you have the length where it can be for the sequence, 
It could be for one beats, two beats, but let's keep it on sequence. You can also transpose a track individually and you can change the velocity. You also have this button over here, which is a record arm button. If this isn't on, then you cannot record inside of that track. You, by default, it is on auto. You also have more options over here from the pencil sign, from anything from clear the track all the way to bounce to audio track or bounce the sample to convert to progressions and so forth. So let's go back into a drum program and then we'll talk about the programs itself. If you select a program, it's important that you know you need to select a program. You can see that it says none, and then you have this plus sign over here where you can create a new program. So if I hit this plus sign, then you see it created a new program. You also can warp samples, assign samples, and edit samples. And this does change depending on what you're using. So if I went to a plugin program, then you see right here that it changed to pad perform, favorite, and sounds. It can also have other options too by hitting the pencil sign. The other icon above the pencil sign is how you would name tracks. So if you hit that, then you can use the QWERTY touchscreen keypad to enter in stuff similar to like a smartphone. I recommend setting your sequence to 100 BPM using this right here, which is a data wheel. Let's talk about how to browse for sounds. So to browse for sounds, you need to hit this button right here, which is the browse button. And when you hit the browse button, you brought into your search directory where you can select anything from your SD card and the internal memory. You can go to content. If you want to select for like drums or something like that, you can hit this right here and it'll bring you to your drums. If you want to search for something specifically, then you would use this search directory. So for instance, since we're in drums, we can type in the word trap and it'll pull up trap drums. We'll use this data wheel to browse. If you don't want to hear previews, just press addition and then you can use this right here to adjust the volume. Let's go ahead and adjust the volume. You can turn auto off. You can also sync this to the BPM. And you can go to warp to warp any samples. Let's go up here to MXX Audio Blessed. We'll select that and then we'll hit this main button to return to the main screen. The main thing you need to do right here is select that program. Otherwise you will not get any sound. Let's go ahead and name this track drums so that we can keep up with stuff. This is a important practice to things that you will learn later. The next important thing is setting up a click track so you can set up a metronome by using the Q link number three, which by the way, these are the Q links right here and they are correlated to these Q link buttons right here, which are one, two, three, and four. So if you hit any of these Q links, you get different options. So if I was to touch a Q link, you can see which option that is. So the first one on the first dot is the program level. So you can adjust the volume. The second one is the playhead where you can adjust the playhead and you can see it move on the screen. The third one is the metronome where we just set up the metronome on record. And then the fourth one is the metronome level. So you can adjust the level of the metronome. If you need to know more about the metronome, you would hit th this button right here on the touch screen where it will tell you what is on right now, which is record and enable only on record. And then the rate is one fourth. And then you can set up the different metronome click sounds. You can set up the level right here and you can also turn it on and off right here. And then you can set it up to a specific output, which is output one and two right now. The next important thing is setting up timing correct, which is like quantized in your DAW. So it's this button right here. And all you have to do to access the option is press that button and it will tell you the things on the screen. So the timing correct right now is on and it's on 1 16th, which is the normal type of quantizing that everyone does in their DAW. And you can set it to as low as a bar or up to 1 64th and you can also do triplets. You can also do swing right over here by adjusting the swing and you can do shift timing too. And also you can just close the screen right now. So let's play with the drum program. It's important to identify which drum does what. So I like this side stick right here, this rim shot and this kick. So this is how you record. 
So you would press the record button and hit play start. If you hit play, then the playhead will resume where it's at right now and that's not what you want. So let's go ahead and hit record and play start and make a drum line. And we'll do it slow, one piece at a time. Three, four. So I messed up on that drum track. That's not what I wanted. You can press the erase button and you can erase everything from all automation, note, and accept notes. But what you can do, which is faster, is just press record and play start and it will overdub over everything without you having to do anything again. And then you see you're in overdub right now, so you gotta be careful so you can turn overdub off and then play with some hats or whatever sound you want. So I'll do that. And you can also turn off the metronome by using this Q link right here. Now you don't need that anymore. Another important thing is if you stop the sequence at any given time, and if you want to record again, the best thing to do is do overdub. If you want to overdub, let's say I want to add this in there. So let's go ahead and hit overdub and play start. See, I'm off beat, but timing correct will fix that. You see? Now we have a drum line. So let's hit the test screen, select another track, and now we're in track number two. This time we will use a plugin. And this time we'll go over here where you can see it says plugin. We're gonna select a plugin. By default, your MPC will come with these type of plugins right here, which is baseline, electric, hype synth, which is free. You will have to install that one though. So what I'm gonna do is select Hype Synth, which you can install on your MPC for free. Now, what I'm gonna do is hit select, and from here I can pick a sound. I will use this data wheel, click down on the data wheel, and then I can select the sound that I like. So I wanna use something like a pad or something like that. I will go to Pad Bright, and then select the sound. You can preview those sounds too. You can also use this Program Edit button to see the UI of the MPC plugin you have in use. Right here, you can see the UI in front of you. What we'll do is just go and select another sound. So I selected furry strings, which sound like this. Now, what we'll do is I'll hit the stop button to stop the sound and then go into the main screen. And now we'll talk about pad perform. So in pad perform, you have the ability to play everything on the screen in perfect tone. So you have chromatic, note, chords, chromatic chords, progressions, and custom. So what we'll do is go to progressions, and this is where things get interesting. In the progressions category, what I'll do is I'll set the scale and the octave, so I will select a C, and then I will go over here to the chords, where we can select the chord, and we're gonna select pop. So let's scroll down to pop, then we'll select top billboard, and from here, now we have this. You can change the octaves of those chord progressions or any notes by going over here to the banks. So let's go to A. And you can also change the octaves over here where you select this and then you will select octave zero. You can play around with any of the progressions on your pads themselves or on the screen as I've showed you already. So. The best thing to do, the best practice is to, and let's turn on the volume of that sound by using this Q link right here and make sure it's on Q link one. And then you can just press play start and practice.
So let's go ahead and record that in. So record, play start. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and name this chords and we'll move on to track number three. Track number three, let's go ahead and name this track bass. After naming it bass, then let's go ahead and hit this plus sign so we can configure a bass line. So to easily lay down a bass line, the best thing to do in this sense would be to go to pad perform. And once we go into pad perform, we can go back into note mode. So remember, we started off with a C major chord. So if we go back to progressions, we see a C major. So let's go over here to note mode and set it to C major. Now we'll exit out of pad perform for a second. And now we'll go over here and select a baseline sound. So you have baseline sounds right inside of your MPC plugins. And what we'll do from here is drop the octave, select a proper baseline sound for that track. We're going to use the sub bass, which is in preview. So if you go over here to preview, select sub bass. You can also favorite your sounds too as well. So if you hit favorite, you can go to an empty slot and then save it into that slot so that you can use it later on if you like that sound. So from here, what I'll do is this. We'll play with this bass line. And let's go ahead and raise the octave so we can hear the bass. Practice it and then record it in. You can drop the octave if you are comfortable or you can record it in this way. Matter of fact, we'll record it in this way so that I can show you another thing. So record, play start. Now remember I was telling you earlier that you can transpose a sound down or a track down or even a sequence. So what you need to do is go over here to transpose right on the screen. There are 12 keys in an octave. So when you go down negative 12, then it will be in perfect pitch. I went down to negative 24 because if you go down 12 more, then that would be negative 24. Now this is a perfect time for me to show you this, where how you can add effects. So all you have to do is hit this eyeball sign right here, make sure that you have it on the track, and then go to insert. Once you go over there to insert, you see no effects. You can use any of these four slots, and you will press down on the data wheel from here, will select some type of distortion. So what I will do is go to air distortion, which is on every MPC. So from here to access that UI, I will hit this pencil sign, and now we can see the air distortion in effect, and it's on the baseline. And I can hear it. Now you can hear it in the subtrack. So from here, what I can do is I can adjust those effects. And you can use the Q-Links to navigate to different parts and mess with different things. And just the threshold. Every effect has its own category of presets. So if you was to hit the data wheel, you can see all the presets right over here. But since I like what I set up, I'm gonna keep it on initial. And I'll just touch the screen so it doesn't mess anything up. And then I'll just press the main button. So from here, I will just close this eyeball sign and we're gonna to go to another track and we're gonna call this the melody. So let's go ahead and set up a melody and then I'll press do it. And from here, 
I can do another plugin. So let's hit this plus sign. Make sure you get in the habit of that. Otherwise, you will mess up your track. And then we'll select another plugin. So from here, I will hit the data wheel. And I'm going to navigate down to TubeSynth. So TubeSynth comes to your in your MPC by default. You don't have to install anything. Let's go to Pluck. And we can play with sounds in real time. Let's adjust the volume. Another cool trick to get to plugin programs is pressing and holding menu and then pressing pad number 14 and pad number 14 will pull up the plugin in front of us like how if you press the program edit button. So let's go ahead and record that in. So I like what I have here. I'll just go ahead and transpose it up so that it can be a little bit more audible. And, and if that sound doesn't match, then you can always go through some of your presets. And then I'll adjust the volume. One of the cool tricks that you can do with melodies, drums, or anything is just go over here to shift and press the main button. So press and hold shift and then press the main button and you can see the grid. You can also access the grid by pressing this side of the touch screen and then you can see everything that you recorded in. And now you have this legends right over here where you can select different things. So you can use this right here to select different notes on the grid. You can use this right here to erase stuff. And then you can also draw stuff in by using this pencil sign right here. It's important that you deselect everything so that you can be able to use this. And you can use this right here to pull and pitch so you can get a closer look. So if you need to get a closer look, then do that. And then select the pencil sign to draw stuff in. This is an important time where I can tell you you have an undo button where you can undo and redo stuff right over here. So you can press this once to undo and you can press shift. So press and hold shift and then press undo to redo if you want that to stay in there. Another thing that you could do is change the velocity by using this pencil sign over here. So once you change the velocity, like maybe you don't want all the notes to be so loud, you can change those velocities right over here. You can also select velocity and then go over here to stuff like probability, ratchet, and so forth. So let's go into probability. And what we'll do is use probability so that these notes will change ever so now and then. So I'll just pitch this in so we can see all the notes. And then we'll just use this pencil right over here to draw in the probability. So the more you have it low, the less likely the sound will appear. And then the higher, the more likely. So let's hear that in action. So it changes every single time that it goes through a cycle through the playhead. So let's get out of the screen. And the next thing we're gonna do is go to another track and establish some other type of melody. So let's go ahead and you know just type it in whatever you want. I'll say melody two, and then I'll hit do it. And now I will hit the plus sign so I can work with another plugin. I'll use another free plugin and it's called Odyssey. And now I'll select a preset. So let's go ahead and lay that down. Record and play start, get in the habit of that. So let's go back to track number one where it's a drum track and there's some things I wanna do to the drum line. So one of the things that make the MPC the MPC is note repeat. The note repeat button is right here. If you tap it once, you'll see that you have your time signature is right over here at the bottom part of the screen. You see one fourth all the way up to one sixty fourths in triplets. What you could do is double tap and it will latch it to the screen. Adversely, you can go ahead and press shift and then note repeat and it will latch it to the screen. While in note repeat, if I was to press a pad, it will continuously repeat that note or that pad. Now, what I can do is implement that in the track, but I'll just experiment and press play start. So I'll do that at the 
hit. And just like anything else you're gonna do if you don't like it. Make sure that you set your time division back to 1 16th just in case you want to record some more and then you can get out a note repeat. Let's talk about track muting. Let's press track mute and now we're in track mutes, which all the stuff that's on the screen correlates with these 16 pads. From here, we can play the track. Lower the volume of it in the back. And I can mute drums. I can mute the bass. I can mute the two melodies, and now we have just the chord. And then I can do that in real time, obviously. You can also record and play start and record everything and automate it. right here and I'll turn it up a little bit if you don't want that automation that you just recorded in there you would just hit the undo button the most important thing is saving your track so how do you save your track so the easiest thing to do is to press shift and then the browse button which will go into save then you can either save on your internal drive on your MPC I recommend that you save on your SD card and then make a folder called like MPC songs. I have my MPC songs folder right here. Uh, you can make a new folder by hitting this button right here, which says new folder. And then you can go into that folder after you named it and then just name it something. So I'm going to name this. I don't know. I'm going to say uh, dance tendo beginner after you type stuff in, hit do it. And then it will prompt you to save, hit save, and now you have saved your project. After the project is saved, it will return back to the main screen, and then you can go about your business and listen to the track. To the right of me, I have more content for that ass. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check us out at 16levels.com. We have a dope sale going on right now, and make sure you sign up for the mailing list. We got an NPC one that we're giving away. And yeah, check out our master classes for the modern day NPCs.